Hello everyone, welcome to the video version of the Heat Bed Hood Mod Assembly Guide. In this video I'm going to walk you through the steps of setting up your mod for your Warhound 2.4. So yeah, let's begin. First of all you need to upgrade to Warhound 2.4. Anything before 2.4 doesn't work. If you can't upgrade to 2.4, you at least have to upgrade the Z drives and the skirts. You don't have to upgrade the gantry, you can use the 2.2 gantry and I think you can even use 2.1 gantry but I'm not 100% on that. But you definitely can use 2.2. And uh, you also need to buy everything listed in the bomb, it is linked in the description below. And you also need to print the parts again listed in the bomb. You need to print them out of ABS. I recommend Boron 2.2's print settings for them, but yeah, you can print however you wish, because I haven't tested anything else to be honest. So after doing all of the steps and preparing everything you need, we can actually begin doing the mod. First of all you need to remove the heat pad extrusions and the open builds corner brackets from your printer. Yeah, you, you just need to remove four screws basically. Also remove the deck panel, disassemble all the electronics and if you are upgrading from 2.2 or anything before you have to do the upgrade to the skirts and Z drives right now. Next step you need to cut your DIN rails to the same size as the, ex the extrusions that you ordered 10 of for your printer. It is 470mm for a 350 Voron, 420 for 300 and 370 for 250. Again, cut your DIN rails. Now mount the DIN rails to the DIN rail brackets that we printed. For that you will need one 10mm M5 screw, two M5 washer and a M5 nut per bracket. So it goes like this from the bottom. It is screw, washer, bracket, rail, washer and then a nut. Again, you need to do this six times for every bracket. And now we can mount the brackets to the frame. For this you use 10mm M5s and M5 T-nuts and mount them parallel to the front extrusions. Now it's time to mount the electronics to the DIN rails. For that, if you haven't done the 2.4 upgrade, obviously, you use the uh, printed parts included in the 2.4 STL files. You already should have printed those, so just install the electronics to the plastic printed parts and then mount them to the DIN rails. You can also do some of the wiring right now if you wish. Now you can mount the uh, uh, parts named panel holders with two M5 8mm screws per uh, pl plastic part and again two T-nuts and you mount them to the front and rear extrusions. These are to support the deck panel and without these you the deck panel won't stay in place so these are necessary. So again mount them to the rear and front extrusions, three per extrusion. And now we can work on the hinges. Before mounting your hinges you need to modify them. Your hinges will, ha will have two sides. One side will have two of these alignment parts and the other side will have four. On the side that has two you need to remove those because they interfere with the extrusion. So what you do is you grab your pliers, hold them and twist until it breaks off. It won't take much force. There we go, and you need to remove both of those on both hinges. There we go, next step is to remove this screw going through the two parts. Now the next step is to mount the hinges. First of all you need to mount these
First of all, you need to mount these two pieces to the heat pad extrusions. Make sure the, they are in the correct orientation. And using M5 12mm screws, you screw these two down. On the back extrusion where the open build uh, corner brackets go, you screw these in instead to the same M5 T-nuts and using M5 8mm screws. Once you've done them both, you just align these two back together and put the screw through. Now you don't want to go too tight to the point where you can't move the hinges but you also don't want to have them too loose otherwise as you can see there is some play in them so you want to tighten this to the point where you can uh, barely move them so that's to so to minimize the play in them but you can still move them which means your gas springs will be able to move them as well and yeah the, this seems pretty much perfect so yeah you do that for both of the hinges and your hinges are now ready next step is to mount the part named extrusion spacer between the two bed support extrusions this is necessary to make sure the bed stays relatively square when the hood if you will, if it's open. So for this you will need 4 M5 8mm screws and 4 M5 T-nuts and just install it somewhere about a third of the way on the extrusion from the hinges. And the next step is to mount the gas springs to the rear extrusions. With these you have to get a little creative when it comes to how you mount them. I can't design a 3D printable part for you to mount them because while well, 3D printed parts break, I actually tried that. And well, also all of the included uh, brackets for the gas springs are different on the market, so I can't really make a design that's universal that works with everything either. So with the gas springs and well, only the gas springs, you have to get creative with the mounting. In my personal setup, on the bottom side, I had to use two 90 degree corner brackets, M5 screws, M5 T-nuts, M4 screws and M M4 uh, nylock nuts. And yeah, again, this will depend on your exact setup. You just need to get it working in the correct angle, as you can see in the picture right now. Once you've mounted those, open the bed as far as it can open and hold it open. Now again, depending on the brackets you have, this may be slightly different, but uh, I think this will be the same for most of them. Secure the gas struts with two 8mm screws per gas strut and again two T-nuts. The size and the thickness of the screw again will depend on your brackets. And yeah, make sure the, you tighten the screws relatively tight. You don't have to be ridiculous about it, but it should be tight enough that it doesn't slide with the force that's applied with the gas struts. And now you can release the bed and see if the gas struts are holding it in place. And also test the gas struts, see if they are actually working before we move on to the next step of preparing the handle and the front piece. To assemble the front two pieces of the heat pad, you will need obviously the mentioned two pieces. Yours won't have the serial number in the front piece if you're printing the included STL, but otherwise it looks just like this. And you will also need this piece. You will need six of these magnets that are specified in the bomb, and you will lastly need two. Uh, four millimeter threaded inserts. These are the same ones that are specced in the uh, Voron 2.4 bomb, so you can use those. So to start the assembly, first of all, you need your soldering iron to insert the threaded inserts. On the bottom side of this, there are these two holes in the center, not the outer ones. 
and you just seat the threaded inserts in these holes make sure your uh, iron is set to a low temperature like 250 degrees is what I like to use and then just push the threaded insert in its place without applying too much force and there we go they are both seated in place now the next step is to mount the magnets and for that first of all you grab three of these for the bottom piece and let's start with one of them you put it you simply just put it in the hole and push it in and well that's basically it and then just to make sure you're using the same polarity um, use this same alignment so you just insert the next one like this and so on and repeat it for the three magnets once you have all three magnets installed move on to this piece now the idea with these pieces is they lock together and this allows you to lift the handle uh, with some friction fit and also the magnets doing their job and this, uh, this makes sure that there is no play in the XY and right now it's not that easy to remove but once it's installed I will show you in a second it will be very easy to remove and that's again it's because uh, friction fit so yeah next thing we need to do is in insert these three magnets Again, you just check the polarity and insert it in the same direction. And there we go. The front is now ready to mount to the heat bed. We will start by mounting this handle piece. Mounting this is fairly simple. You just put it on the extrusion align it push it in and then you grab two m5 12 millimeter screws put them in these holes and screw them in now for mounting the bottom piece you first of all make sure that it's facing the correct direction which means these two M3 holes are in the back and you also need to have your M5 T-nuts in place you put the piece on and using two M5 this time 8mm screws you just screw it in but leave it loose enough that this thing still slides around we need, we need it to slide so we can align these pegs these two pegs properly so again make sure it's sliding and then lower the heat pad align the two pegs and close the heat pad now what you do is, while holding the bottom piece, lift the heat bed again and tighten these two screws while making sure that you don't slide them. And just double check if you did it correctly. In my case it looks good. Now we need to prepare the deck panels 
The deck panels in this mod will have to be in three pieces and I included some files for you to, if you want, wish to get a laser cut or something, you can use that DXF file or you can just measure and cut it on your own. It basically has to clear the gas struts and otherwise the splits should hide under the extrusions so the splits are hidden. So yeah, just cut the deck panels. Now if you are using uh, any sort of a flexible material for your deck panel, like I'm personally using HDPE, I know most people are using Coroplast, which I assume has will work the same way. And I think ABS even will work the same way as well. You don't need to do anything, just try to insert them in the place without removing the Z-belt covers. It should fit. But if it doesn't fit, or if you're using something rigid, like some sort of a metal or glass or acrylic, or I don't know, something like that, then your Z belt covers will prevent the installation of the deck panels. And if that's the case, just remove the Z belt covers and stick some double sided VHB tape underneath them and stick them to the deck panels themselves. Make sure you align them properly, obviously, and well they will stay in place and they will function the way they should so there won't be any problems with those and the mod will still work now next thing is if you don't trust these magnets or if you're not using magnets at all uh, you can use m3 screws and you can use them to secure the bed in place while it's closed for that you just insert the screws to these two top holes Now these M3 screws went through the middle piece to the threaded inserts on the bottom and as you can see no matter how hard I pull on the handle the bed is not moving anymore lastly you need to calibrate your z nozzle height using the usual paper test i'm not going to go through how you do that but yeah it is fairly well known it will depend on your firmware and on the screen right now you can see a part of eddie's guide on skr boards and clipper but yeah again it will depend on your setup but it is fairly simple and you've probably done it already anyway and you will only have to do this once unless you change anything with the mod. You will still have to do quad gantry leveling every time you open and close the bed and probably occasionally as well but that's something that only takes a minute and it's pretty simple so it's not a big deal in my opinion. And you should run one quad gantry level at least right now as well. But other than that this as as far as my tests show, you don't have to do the Z-nozzle calibration again every time you open or close the bed, so yeah, that's at least something to save time. So the assembly is now finished and that's it for this video. I hope you found this guide useful and I hope you liked this mod. If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.